This is Countdown to Economic Collapse, April 24th, 2011. I'm David John Spahn. I'm running for president in 2012. I gotta tell you, this past week has been unbelievable. A surge of the silver market reaching 47.90 per ounce. Gold at an unbelievable rate of 1512.50, the highest ever in the gold market. This is a, an example of how a market like the commodity markets react to people losing faith in our future and in our dollar. Now what I believe is happening is we are of course reacting to Ben Bernanke's QE2 and talk of QE3, quantitative easing 3 coming. The idea that printing money is going to solve this is falling apart in the eyes of many economists around the country. They're seeing this as a, a false bottom and a potential uh, October 2008 crisis again. Okay, let's take a look at what the value of the dollar has done over the past nine years. Since 2002, where the value of the dollar in the world market was $1.20, the dollar has dropped to an overall value of 75 cents. In nine years, we've seen a drop of 37% in the value of the dollar. And that, that is a crisis right there. This past week, with the spike in prices on silver and gold, is a reaction to people losing faith in our economy. The interdicting factors like the crisis in the Middle East, the Fukushima nuclear disaster, all of these are contributing greatly to this panic. So the stock market, which is experiencing enormous profits because of the amount of money that Ben Bernanke has pushed into the economy. Remember, he said he put $12 trillion over two years in loans out to our country and foreign multinational corporations. Ben Bernanke has fueled a devaluation of the dollar by printing up so much that it has created this false sense of security that the stock market's doing great, therefore our country's doing great. Well, that's not the case. People are still out of work. There's almost 14 million people out of work. Housing market is still looking at foreclosures, which are coming down the pipe. Over 465,000 foreclosures in the works right now and many more to come. Remember, there's about $11 trillion in the holdings, foreclosures being a part of the Freddie Mac, Fatty Mae holdings, the foreclosure mortgage-backed security market is affected, as well as the four major banks that are holding an additional $11 trillion in homes. Those are weighing in the balance. Nothing's going forward in the government to resolve this. The home loan modification program is barely functioning and is not even helping the people that are really in need. So the systemic flaws in our economy continue to persist and this president has been unable to come up with any new ideas out of the box to stimulate our economy. Well, printing of money is not on my agenda as your president. What we're going to do is possibly convert one of the denominations like the hundred dollar bill to some other type of backed dollar. For instance, a silver backed dollar like John F. Kennedy produced in the early 60s. We could create a cross spectrum backed dollar that's backed by gold, silver, platinum, oil, even biofuel. And that would eventually stabilize one particular currency in our country. But our currency is going to be affected by the exodus of investors from our dollar. And remember, our dollar is still the currency used to trade in major commodity markets around the world, like oil. So as our dollar weakens in its acceptability around the world as a form of currency, we are going to have to do something to curtail this inflation which has been created by the printing of money by the Federal Reserve. So that's one idea a convertible currency like a hundred dollar bill. Another idea is to shore up our primary, our primary resources in this country. Now, just the past week, China announced that it was going to stop exporting rare earth metals, the kind of metals that go into wafer technology, the kind of technology that our country's actually earning a lot of money on, like cell phones, smartphones. These rare earth metals could create a huge gap in production in that market, which could affect our technology growth. The agriculture our country is experiencing is also on decline, 2% each year under Barack Obama. That's a bad thing. So I'm going to reverse both of those trends, shore up our rare earth metal production capability, which is badly in disrepair right now. What with the steel industry uh, falling by the wayside, the aluminum industry also suffering, we have to shore up our ability to create and process rare earth metals. Second of all, we need a larger domestic oil supply. 
it is essential to start leveraging more on our own ability to create oil as opposed to Saudi Arabia's or the GCC, the Gulf Cooperation Council, which is influencing our current foreign relations. The activity that we are engaged in in Libya, I am completely against. I am completely sure that our country is not going to benefit from ousting Gaddafi, and we're not going to be able to seize the oil that the rebels are supposedly going to get their hands on, because there's always going to be another rebel leader who will become like Gaddafi, and will begin using that oil as a bargaining chip. It's inevitable. We are so naive as to think that we're going to export our brand of democracy around the world. We haven't learned from Afghanistan, we haven't learned from Iraq, we haven't even learned from Vietnam. And here Obama is making the same mistakes with these countries and ultimately we will pay the price at the gas pump. And that's proving to be true right now. So you're seeing an, a large exodus of confidence from our dollar and from our markets and you will see commodities continue to surge in value and that, that's not going to level off anytime soon in my opinion. So what we are seeing right now is a big shift toward an ultimate stock market crash like the one we saw in October of 2008. So count on that, plan on that, and instead make your investments in long-term commodities that you know will be valuable, and I think silver is still a good buy. No matter what the price, I still think it's a long-term pathway to uh, successful investments. I don't necessarily think that gold is a good value. The production value of gold is, is much higher than silver. It costs a lot more to mine gold than silver. And silver is still a much less cost, one fortieth of the cost of gold. So obviously it's become a very strong market and will remain so. And it's less likely to be copied or imitated. There's rumors that there's large bullions of gold made out of tungsten because it's the same density as gold and that they've been gold plated. Well, if that hits the gold market, that could send gold plummeting in value. I think silver would be a good long-term investment. So that's my strategy. Look for downturns in the stock market in the coming weeks and also prepare for the inevitable. Stock up on food. Prepare for personal survival because this economy is getting very wild and reckless. I'm David John Spahn. I'm for America's Third Party. Thank you. Check us out at americasthirdparty.com.